All right, gents, listen up. I need three volunteers. What you need a volunteer for, Gunny? Okay, two more volunteers. Son of a bitch. Welcome to the Mac and Clay Show, episode one. I am your host, Mac, along with me, my esteemed colleague. Clay here. The purpose of the show, the Mac and Clay Show, is to be a little bit of a reprieve from all the nonsense that we hear in the world. Everybody's angry at each other. Everybody's like shouting at each other and, you know, everybody's debating who's wrong, who's right, you know, should we be doing this, should we be doing that? And we kind of want to bring more of a humorous side to the discussion, you know, topical type stuff, military related stuff. Mac and Clay, we were both in the Marine Corps, so we have a uh, veteran skewed slanted perspective about things. Um, but it's not necessarily a show for Marines or a show for veterans only. It's, you know, just whoever wants to listen, whoever wants to chime in and uh, talk about shit with us and laugh and hopefully uh, not leave here angry, but leave here a little bit more maybe inspired and uh, um, kind of considering some things from a different perspective and hopefully uh, be a better, uh, better outlook on life at the end of the show. Um, yeah. So a little introduction, uh, I'll let uh, Clay click off uh, who we are. So yeah, we'll back that up. I want to bring a positive message, there's a little bit of humor into it, and then, uh, and basically, um, I don't know, provide it, we want to make sure the show ends on a positive note, give you something to think about, something to do after all the fuckery along the show, um, but it's for your weekly listening pleasure, without a doubt. A little bit about Mac here. So. What can you say about old Mac Gunner? Um, he'd like folks to think that he's a badass rootin' tootin' shootin' jawhead, but it's really just not the case. Um, come to find out through a little bit of digging, a little bit of research, a little bit of MOL online, whatever, um, found out he was nothing more than a fucking water support technician. So like he was the water boy of the core. Um, which is about the most bullshit MOS you can have. Like, okay, so I'm going to go put a bunch of bleach in water so people can drink it. Like, like it's, really it's, it's, it's iodine. Don't is that ice. what it is? Yeah, we put iodine in water. It's not bleach. You, yeah, you can't oh drink bleach. God. I mean, get it right. If you're going to have, what's it's the most important like thing? How many times have you heard the, the uh, phrase hydrate? Right? Okay. It, Hydration it's, is it's, very it's, key. It's, it's key. It's important. So yeah. if you're out there humping, doing all your grunt shit, you know, you need water. Well, where does that water come from? It's got to come from somewhere. And I'm going to be that guy. From and, water you know, support technicians. That's right. You know, and <laughs> it's not my fault that your ASVAB score wasn't high enough to purify water. <sighs> and you know what? I've, hey, look, I get to give you guys a little bit of background history on Clay trying to talk about being like some combat engineer blowing shit up. Yeah, that's not the case. He was an 0515 uh, admin clerk. And that's how he dug up all this nonsense about me. But you know what? I will give him credit because he is the only admin clerk with a combat action with him. I was in the middle of processing some ad set papers, and uh, yeah, that was a that was the worst point in my career. Uh, our first segment is WTF or FTW? What the fuck? Before the win. So, in honor of our first subject, we are both wearing our PP polos uh, to show support for the armed couple, and everybody knows the armed couple. Is. You got old boy wearing his just stellar outfit, rocking that M16, and he ain't taking shit from nobody. He just wanted to grill. Especially. He just wanted to grill, and now he's got to kill. That's good, ready And to he's kill. got Charlene, his wife, over there, and she, you know, she was out there grilling too because she got the mustard stains all off over her shirt, and she's with there. She's got three little pistola ready to just jack people. Yeah. With so, all the all the muzzle and trigger awareness ever, you can tell. Yeah, yeah. you can tell there was right? some serious They're weapons ready. training and weapons handling skills yeah. uh, involved. Yeah. They've been shooting for a while. <laughs> um, so what's that name? So the real name's Mark and Patricia, but I've heard them called Ken and Karen, which I think is a little more fit, right? Like right, Ken yeah. and Karen, that's a Karen, right? Like I get it. That's um, yeah, you, she's definitely asked for the manager a few times. No shit. <laughs> <laughs> I demand to speak to your manager. Yes, and if not, I'm gonna hot your ass with this. Yeah, but so so that that's a WTF. But what about for the win? Like a couple that is uh, actively exercising their two A rights by protecting their property from an angry mob, right? Yeah, so I mean, kind of goes back we'll and them, forth. We'll give them three points for style, 
but five to 10 points, you know, we're, we're in the positive range for exercising their rights and protecting their land, their property. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I don't blame him. Some, if I was just hanging out, drilling in the backyard and all of a sudden an angry mob come rolling through, you know, I might be running for the gun safe too. Yeah. I'd probably, I mean, be, I'd probably be hiding that, in the bushes and you wouldn't see my ass, but and I, I might spray you with some purified water first. <laughs> I mean, but I like to calm the situation. Nothing happened to their house. Yeah. yeah. Nothing happened. I mean, that was they, the result. Them. Before yeah. the win result was nobody spray painted their front yard. Yeah. They stayed Nobody off the touched lawn. their multi-million dollar house. They stayed like, off the I mean, lawn. Yeah. <laughs> do not walk on my grass. So, you know, this is like I said, we have discussion. So leave us comments. Like, what do you think about the armed couple, how they handled the situation? Um, I think – Everything that we see in society could be a learning moment, right? So from my perspective, we look at this situation, you look at some of the uh, escalation that's going on in our communities and some of the people that are getting very angry and want to want to protest and be heard, which uh, they're exercising their First Amendment rights, trying to voice their opinion and need to be heard, which is awesome. That's part of what this country was uh, founded on. And then you also have the uh, right to defend yourself and protect your property. Um, I think that you can be heard and talk about uh, whatever it is you need to be talk, uh, talking about and, and do it in a way where you don't need to be violent. You don't need to be threatening to uh, other people. If your protest is against the system, then ch channel your efforts towards the system. Don't channel your efforts towards your community. Um, because then you're just tearing the community apart. And what we were trying to talk about in the show is we want to encourage unity, not division, because this country was founded on unity and coming together for common freedoms. And if we are at each other's throats constantly, we're eroding the whole purpose of what this country was founded for. Um, so, but if you, you look at it too also, you know, when the couple came out, their defensive posture. There's a, there's a lot of takeaways from this about how you could do things better. Like it's easy to be a armchair critic and see this on TV or see it on the internet and make funny memes and shit about it. But um, I think it's also important to consider what would you do if that was your yeah. house? What would you do right. if your kids are in the backyard and people who are kind of, you know, you don't know their intentions. You don't know if they're peacefully protesting, holding their signs and just trying to be heard. Or just like what you've seen on the news, are they coming through neighborhoods and smashing windows, breaking shit and tipping over cars, starting stuff on fire? Like, you don't know. So you can't just passively stand by and watch. You've got to be ready. So you'd want to have a defensive posture. You don't need to be aggressing and escalating but you should be ready, stand ready, and defend. Um, so I think that's important to consider um, when you see stuff like this. Absolutely. I mean, I interviewed him, and he said he was scared to death. And it was, he was doing the only thing he knew how to do. Um, and he's catching a lot of slack for doing what he did. But, I mean, if that was your house, like you just said, what would you do? Would you just sit by and let somebody, you know, tear up what you have, you know, I don't know, put your life's work into building what you pay for every month, what you, um, no, hell no, you should never do that. So, um, stand up for what you believe in, no matter if you, you know, nobody got shot that day, nobody died, no, nothing, no property got damaged other than the gate coming in there evidently. So it worked right. Good, bad or indifferent. I feel like that was a success. So, um, no matter how they view him or how they view his muzzle awareness, or his wife running around with her finger on the trigger. I, I bet there wasn't even one in the tube of that damn pistol. I bet she was just running around with her finger on the trigger. Like She I, probably I, had I an active that. jam. She didn't even know. <laughs> <laughs> I bet she probably don't know what tap rack banging is either, but she you know, it, it is. It she is knows what it tap is. rack banging is, but it's not what we think it is. <laughs> it's banging that hot dog in her mouth. <laughs> That's right. Mustard just, there's mustard involved in tap rack banging for that one. Oh, God almighty. Hell um, yeah. So that concludes this segment for uh, WTF, WTF or for the win. Um, let us know in the comments what you think. Uh, and you know, try to be, if you're going to comment, if you're going to uh, engage in the conversation, try to be productive. Um, we're not looking for 
flaming people or trolling. We're looking for um, intellectual uh, advice or experience. You know, if you've had a situation where you were in a similar situation where you felt threatened and you needed to uh, use your weapon, uh, or if you were in a protest and you felt like you needed to, uh, or if you did something in a protest where you felt like you got your message across in a peaceful way, and you had advice and like, hey, this is a proper, uh, effective way to get your voice heard. Um, let us know what you think in the comments. Um, Hell yeah. And then uh, we'll move right on. So the last segment for the show is going to be um, kind of you know, our positive message. And this kind of stuff is, you know, we're not trying to be preachy. We're not trying to be um, acting like as if we were professionals or experts on the subject matter, but uh, we're just speaking from a position of experience, uh, personal experience, and what um, we've been through and what we are working through constantly. And, you know, I've, um, when I was in the Marine Corps and I was purifying the water, um, you know, sometimes that water, sometimes that water purification was pretty stressful. And, you know, um, you might be surprised to know that while I was purifying frying water, I fell off a water bowl and banged my head and came, came out with a TBI and uh, cracked my helmet. And, uh, Sorry to hear that. Yeah, and, you know, I got my purple heart. So um, it, was, uh, it was a stressful in, uh, situation. And, you know, I deal with some uh, lasting uh, traumatic and uh, depression-type anxiety, things like that that are very common for guys who deployed their wreck. Um, or Afghanistan, or you know, or just in the military in general, um, and PTSD can be something that um, you don't have to be a combat veteran to experience PTSD. It's a tra anything traumatic uh, can definitely affect uh, your mental your mental health. Um, and so, one, you know, I've been going through different counseling sessions uh, throughout the years, and just kind of like really trying to be a student of how. Um, PTSD works and how anxiety and depression works. And I think with the COVID situation at hand, you know, we're all kind of stuck at home or life has been obviously very different um, since March and February of this year. And um, so I was struggling uh, with just, I just, I hated what was going on. I hated that I couldn't do the things that I normally did. I hated I hated the situation I was in, um, and I and became you know I became stressed out, um, riddled with the anxiety, and uh, depressed. Um, and so one of one of the things I was telling you know I was going through all this stuff with my counselor, and I was telling her about you know how I felt, and um, for myself you know have a, a avoidant personality, so if things get a little rough. Um, I kind of try to avoid the situation versus like digging in and getting through it. Um, and so she coined, or it didn't coin, but she brought up the uh, idea of radical acceptance. Um, so what do you think, Clay? Do you, do you have any experience with radical acceptance? You know, I'll tell you the first time that I heard of it, it was from you because I, you know, I've, I in turn, you know, that uh, it was traumatic for me dropping that laptop that time. So I in turn had some uh, some experience with uh, some some lasting effects in the Marine Corps. Right. Um, and uh, yeah, a great all that stuff is going is coming into play. It's it's impacting a ton of people, um, and it has impacted me. You feel like you're stuck. You can't don't want to go anywhere. You don't know what to do. If you watch the news, you stay stressed out. Um, but once you mentioned it to me, I started digging a little bit and, and realizing that um, that radical acceptance, although it may seem like it's a very hard concept to follow, it's basically if you strip everything down, it is what it is. Like we say it all the time, but do we really mean it, right? Like we say, we say it is what it is all the time. But the theory behind that is just accepting things as they are that you can't change and how you can positively change the things you can that okay. you will have an impact on. Right. So right. it's definitely, um, I feel like it would take some training to get to that point to, to not go to the negative side all the time, because it's a lot easier to go negative, right. than just positive. Your mind just naturally goes that way. Well, maybe, I don't know, <clears throat> maybe we're predispositioned to that. Well, I think, but, I think um, what you're talking about, the easy part is it's, it's an act, it's a uh, reaction versus a response. So yeah. something bad happens 
the, your brain uh, automatically reacts with an emotion. And then your, yeah. uh, from that point, your frontal lobe, your part of your brain has the, has the ability to then decide what to do with that emotion. And for me, you know, being pissed off, you know, yelling or like separating myself and just being like, you know what? I just feel like I got, I got no drive for today. I'm just depressed. I'm just going to go, you know, drink a couple of beers and go sit and watch TV and just like kind of drown my misery away and just not be productive. And that's just not yeah. who I am. Uh, I'm most happy when I have, uh, some drive, some purpose, and I'm getting things done. That's who I am. I like to get things done. I like to uh, create. I like to, um, engage. I like to work out. I like to, you know, try to make my situation better all the time. And with, you know, all the stuff that's going on right now, I felt like, uh, there was just too much. It felt overwhelming. There's too many things that I couldn't handle. And so I just gave up on doing anything. Um, and what the purpose or the idea of radical acceptance is, is that you accept what situation you are in. You may not like it. You may not, you may hate it. You may like this fucking sucks, yeah. but does saying this fucking sucks and just sitting there and doing nothing about it. Does it get you anywhere better? It doesn't. It doesn't help. But when it you goes say, back to being part of the solution, not part of the problem, right? Like, I mean, I, I equate it to that. Yeah. But let me, I'm going to give them the definition so, so, that when, so they now understand. So basically, um, while pain is a part of life, radical acceptance allows us to keep that pain from turning into suffering. So by accepting the facts of reality without responding by throwing a tantrum or with willful negligence, in other words, it is what it is. So, yeah. like that that to strip it down and to give everybody an idea and i think you can you could put that towards anything in your life um and and i have tried this week and it and i you know i think it helps give an entirely positive outlook on things rather than just you know fuck i hate this or i hate being here like well what can i do to be productive what can i do to to make myself feel better about the situation right, right. so um what can you do to affect change I like yeah. that. I like that you can, you know, anything you can say, uh, something bad happened and it sucked. And yeah. what you just described is, do I sit here and prolong the suffering and just be miserable with this situation that sucks? Or do I accept that what just happened sucks? And now it's like, it's not easy. Like you said, you, you got to practice this. No. You have to be aware first. Yeah that this is your mindset, this is your intention, that you will uh, accept what just happened, take a deep breath, and then give your brain a chance to kind of process what just happened, and then work through it. And be like, okay, what do I want? What can I change? What can I affect right now? Can I do a two, a two or three little things to just make this slightly better? And what mm -hmm. I've learned is, I think life is all about momentum. Um, yeah. For me, I need momentum. I, I, I need either growth or change. I can't sit stagnant in the same situation. That's where I just start getting miserable. So if I can start making small little adjustments to change the situation that I'm in, then it's like it becomes, you get that motivation with it. So then you're like, okay, well, yeah. I made that part of this a little bit better. Now that's handled. Now let me uh, continue and find the next thing that I can change. And then what happens is you start making progress. And then right after that, that feeling of being overwhelmed starts to dissipate because you've kind of compartmentalized the issues and then you've ta tackled them one at a time. And then the next thing you know, you're like, oh shit, well, this situation isn't as bad as it seemed when it first happened. I, I was able to manage and work through it. Yeah. Heck yeah. So that's like, so I would encourage anybody that's hearing this or listening to it and struggle with some things or depression or anything, or they're pin up, whatever, do some research on your own, look up radical acceptance, read, read uh, some stuff on it, learn how to do it. And then just try it. The next time something bad happens or you're faced with something, try to just try to take a different outlook on it and have a different um, perspective. You do that so many times, it's going to become habit. It's proof. Um, right. Your mind will naturally go that way. And so it's a training evolution. 
Um, but that was good. I'm glad you introduced me to that because it gives me a lot more stuff to think about. So it doesn't necessarily have to be just for veterans or anybody else. It can, it can apply everywhere. If you're constantly, and you know, turn off the damn news, man, like just turn it off. Cause <laughs> your radical acceptance will be tested to the end. If you keep hearing that stuff. Yeah. Well, that is a big part of it too. It is, you know, if, if you can identify what is stressing you out, and that happens to be the news. It happens to be Facebook. It has, happens to be all of the things that are going on. It becomes very easy to just dwell on that stuff and make your situation worse. So if you are prone to anxiety, depression, or just being angry about the situation, you know, I think it's important to be up on current events. You don't want to stick your head in the sand. But at the same time, you don't need to be constantly feeding yourself negativity if it causes yeah. you to be... Because especially like stressed out. if you can't do anything about it, like let's say you're, you know, watching the news about something that's happening in a different state, a place that you've never even been. And you think, oh, this is fucking bullshit. Like, why are they even doing that? This is retarded. You're like, you don't live there. You don't know those people. You don't, you're not, that's not your direct community. There's nothing that you can do about it. Yeah. But you let than, it wreck your day. Other you know, than get really pissed right. off. Other than get pissed off. And then... Yeah bring that negativity into your personal life. And then the next thing you know, you're getting in a fight with your wife or you're cutting somebody off on the highway. And he's like, where'd you bring all this anger from? And you're like, well, because yeah. those people 10,000 miles away are being assholes. I'm like, oh, okay. okay, take it easy. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm only saying Karen. this because I'm <laughs> guilty of this. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. But that's learning though. Like you, right. you, you grow, you evolve, you gr get older, you learn how to deal with stuff better. So that's the point of, of these segments in the show is to try to give you some stuff that we have learned. I mean, I joined 20 years ago. So, I mean, I'm almost 40 right now. So like there's a lot of stuff we've learned through trips to the VA, private doctors, whatever we may, our own research. And we're just trying to give to you maybe a different way to think about it. And that's how we kind of want to, in the show out is like, is, is on a positive note, some, some kind of self-help, some kind of something. It may not always be positive, but it may be funny, but, um, we guarantee it won't be negative. That's, that's, so that's yeah. what we're trying to bring. So do we yeah. want to leave everybody with a question, right? Yeah. And so on that, what can you do? Like if you thought anything that we talked about today rang true with you, if it, if you identified with it, if you were like, Oh yeah, that, that does feel, you know, like something similar to my situation if you're dealing with anxiety, depression, or just like bullshit from this 2020 craziness that we're living in. What can you do to accept where you are first and just be like, it is what it is. 2020 is a bitch. And there's nothing I can do to change that fact that it's just a bitch. What are the things that I can change? And consider that. And then work through it one thing at a time and just affect the things that you can make better in your little bubble and try to protect that bubble and try to uh, strengthen it and, and continue to work within that con confine of area that you can affect. And uh, hopefully you'll see some, uh, some positive change. Hell yeah. And if, you need it, if you ever need some typing done, you know, Clay's out there for you. And if you ever need some high quality H2O. High back. quality H2O. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Let's get yeah. you on the next episode. Take care.